on my palm here is probably what I feel is the most viable, lightest portrait setup that you can actually get in the market today. And if you ask me, this setup is probably something I will actually recommend to many people out there. This is the Fujifilm X-S10, the latest camera by Fujifilm, together with the 50mm f2. So uh, this is Jolene here, we will do a photo shoot with her later and then after that we have some photos itself. After that I will see you back in the studio and then we can review the photo shot with this camera. See you later! I'm Richard and welcome to ZP Productions and today we will look at this setup here. This is the XS10 together with the Fujifilm 50mm f2 lens. Now the XS10 of course is a really new body. I recommend you to look at my reviews of this body so far. Uh, while the 50mm f2 has been in the market very long, this is of course uh, equivalent to something like a 75 f2.8. It is weather resistance and it is one of the newer lenses in the Fujifilm lineup. Now, I'm not going to review the individual components here because today I'm talking about the whole setup, this palm size portrait setup that I really feel is very, very usable. By the way, if you have not now followed my channel so far, I'm a portrait photographer and I do quite a lot of portraits. I review a lot of the equipment from a portrait photographer's point of view. So to me, this is one of the most viable mini setup you can get for the purpose of portraiture and there is a few reasons. First, let's talk about handling in the field itself. I say that this camera here is really very good to handle in the field. Now, if you have seen my earlier reviews of the XS10, yes, there's a lack of buttons. There is no more the shutter ISO dials or exposure compensation dials. But with it, it is a more modern setup where you, know, you can actually change most of the settings using all the dials and buttons here. Now, this camera, even though it is positioned as a relatively low price camera, its controls are not that low price. There are sufficient buttons for the purpose of portrait shoots out in the field. And uh, overall, if you ask me, it is very nice to use. Not only that, with the 50mm f2, which is not a very heavy lens, this is something like 200 grams, while the body is 460 grams, making this whole setup 660 grams, one of the lightest. Uh, the next competitor is probably something like the uh, Sony 660 because you must consider that it must have IBs and all the various other functions together with maybe something like the Sigma 56 1.4. Yes, that is one stop faster but it weighs more. That whole setup I believe is about 120 to 150 grams heavier than this. Uh, putting that setup closer to something like if I'm not wrong around 800 over grams. Well, this is 660 grams, really damn light. So, the most important thing is not that it's light, but it's the handling and the XS10 for a small camera has one of the best handling in the market because Fujifilm decided to put the battery below, you know, uh, straight on the, in the grip itself, creating a very thick and good grip. And if you have used many cheaper cameras or compact cameras that can change the lens out there, what happens is that most of the time the grip gets lost in the process and it becomes really hard to use in the field. While this camera and with this whole setup weighing less than 700 grams, 600, just, just 660 grams, it is a blast to use in the field. You can really handhold this whole setup with one hand without much fatigue throughout the entire photo shoot itself. Now, why is it so important to be able to handhold one hand with a setup like this? It's because your other hand can be used to direct the model, as I always say, and also to hold reflectors. Now, in this particular shoot here, all the shots I've done is with a reflector and I'm always holding it with my left hand. I'm using a really big one, something like a 1.2 meter triangle reflector and I'm always using one hand to hold the reflector itself and the other hand to do the photos. As you can see, all the shots here, you can see some slight reflections in the eyes or in the face and really, if this camera was any more heavier, I tried using the Canon, I tried using other full frame cameras that I have. Holding one hand is very tiring on those setups. Well, with this setup, I can easily hold one hand with it and the other hand, you know, holding the reflector itself. Very simple. Or if not, I can just put a reflector on the ground because it's big enough and I can direct the model with my other hand. So overall, this camera handling is fantastic and the weight is low enough to handle it however you want, whatever you want. Really one of the nicest camera to handle in the field, at least for, port for portraiture itself. Now, the next thing is uh, autofocus. And this setup here, autofocus, I wouldn't say is really fantastic. I did notice that uh, the XS10 autofocus wise, if it is in bright daylight and there is a lot of contrast on the subject itself or let's say on the lashes, uh, you won't miss any focus. In fact, I found out that uh, the focus hits like 90%. So, my last video I did talk about autofocus and it tends to miss. I noticed that happens a lot in anywhere with slightly lower contrast. Or let's say if you're focusing on a person and the person is backlit to a certain extent, 
yes, the focus gets thrown off like crazy. And not only that, in this particular shoot, you can see that the model is wearing a hat. And in this shoot, I can tell you that maybe 70% of the shots are really tech sharp, while 30% of the shots are relatively uh, a little bit off and a little bit soft. Uh, not a big deal if you ask me, but just to note that the moment you have si something slightly less contrasty, something in the shade with bright backgrounds, this setup here tend to, I would say, as not miss focus, but tend to be slightly off focus. Not a big deal unless you are printing something like, uh, let's say, A1 or A0. But it is there and when you pixel pip, you will see it. Now, regarding IAF, I noticed that the IAF, uh, if you have seen my earlier review on XS10, on this setup, is really the same. IAF normally works uh, and it usually is okay. However, at times, it may not work the way you want or it's just a little laggy if you ask me. So, sometimes moving the point is still the better way out, at least for this setup here. Now, if Fujifilm can improve the setup in terms of autofocus, I think it'd be fantastic. I think that is the last Achilles heel of this XS10 setup itself. And the if there's any form of improvement to autofocus, this setup will be perfect. And next we want to talk about is image quality. Now, I skip IBs for this because both of my shoots were outdoor. And uh, really, as a handheld portrait device, I think the IBs will be great, but it's not my focus for today's video. So for image quality wise, you can see the images so far. They look pretty okay. They look, I'll say as pretty much really nice. And there is not much complaint. Of course, the bokeh could have been a little bit more. The photos could have been a little bit sharper, but that's not really the point. The point is that with this setup, you still can get really, really nice photos that people won't be questioning your gear, but questioning your skills. And that is the important part. If I zoom in on some of the sharper photos, you can really see how tech sharp this whole setup is. Really, sharpness is not a problem here. And if you say, is bokeh a problem? Look at the background so far. Do you find that bokeh is a problem? If I don't tell you that it's a 50mm f2 here, would you have expected it to be a 50mm 1.4? 50mm 1.0, I do not know. In fact, I think most of us can't really tell the bokeh itself how good or how bad it is unless we compare with other lenses. And you can really straight up see that the bokeh overall looks smooth enough and maybe, you know, something like the 85 1.2 will be significantly different. But if not, something that just one stop lower probably won't make much difference to your shooting experience itself, at least as long as the background is not messy. Now, in my final conclusion, this is a really magical setup if you ask me. I have used many portrait setups and this is probably the lightest and smaller setup that you can get in the market today that is good to handle. Imag just remember that if you want to one hand hold any form of setup, it must be good to handle, which means firstly, it must have a good grip. Secondly, all the buttons and necessary settings must be doable with just the dials on your hand. If not, how can you one hand hold on this uh, setup itself? This setup is really great for that. And there's one thing I never cover in my entire review so far is the flip out screens. And really, <laughs> Fujifilm with this new flip out screen is fantastic. Not only can you, you know, shoot from low angles, high angles, but most importantly, if this is your only camera in the field and if you have something like a wider lens such as a 23 or 17 or 16 mm, you can slap it on and then you can also vlog with this setup here in addition to shooting whatever you want in the field itself. So not only is it a really great portrait lens, but if you really want to do some vlogging, it is also great itself. Overall, I really enjoy using this setup for my two photo shoots and I really can say that this is one of the nicest palm size <laughs> portrait camera setup that you can get in the market today. This is the Fujifilm XS10 with the 50mm f2 and I highly recommend this if you just want to do some portraits, don't want to spend a whole lot of money and want something light and compact and if you ask me, really usable in the field itself. And that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.